Hey guys, I'm Stephanie and thanks for checking out my channel. As you may have noticed, I am not wearing any makeup today, or I should say I'm not wearing any makeup yet, because today I'm going to be doing a full face first impressions. And when I say full face, I mean every single product I'm about to put on my face I have never tested before, so everything is brand new with me and I can't wait to share my initial thoughts and have you guys watch how <laughs> I go about this. Hopefully it's not too much of a disaster. Um, if you watch my previous videos, you'll know that I just did a big super drug haul and a big boots haul, and that's where these products have come from. So if you want to check out those hauls, I will put the links in the description box down below. So let's get into it. So I've just pulled my hair back and moved you guys in a little bit closer. The first product I'm going to be testing out is this blending sponge from super drug. It's from their own line. So this is what it looks like without any water. So I'm going to add some water to it and see how much it absorbs. So that absorbed quite a bit of water. It was really hard before the water. Now it is, it's definitely softer. I wouldn't say it's as soft as other sponges, but it definitely had, it's definitely not as hard because before it was like a rock and I was like, I'm not <laughs> excited to use that for blending. So it's great that it did soften up a bit. Just before I get into all this, I want to apologize if I keep looking off to the side here. It's because that's where I can see myself in the viewfinder and I want to make sure that I am still in focus for you guys and that you're able to see what I'm doing. So sorry if I'm not always looking directly into the camera. Uh, the first product I'm going to use is the One Heck of a Blot Instant Perfecting Power Primer from Soap and Glory. And this is used to... what are their claims? Ah. This has shine block, 12 hour matte spheres, and pore shrink technology. So because it has pore shrink technology and mattifying properties, I'm going to use it all over my whole face. Sometimes I do use separate primers for mattifying. I use on my T-zone and a bit on my chin, and then pore filling primers I use in this area. But since this claims to do it all, I'm going to put this all over my face. I just like to warm up the product a bit before I put it all over. Um, in terms of how it feels on the skin, it doesn't feel too slippery or tacky. Um, I wouldn't say this really did anything for my pores. And um, I do feel like it could definitely be mattifying though, so we will see how that goes. So next I'm going to use that super drug sponge. And the foundation I will be using today is the it's from Boots. It's their number seven line. It's a perfect foundation, non-stop complexion perfection up to 24 hours. And it has an SPF of 15 and it is hypoallergenic. I do like it when my foundations have a bit of SPF because right now the face products that I'm using in my morning routine don't have any SPF in them. And it's always good to have that little bit of coverage. So this says it is a life-proof foundation for natural flawless complexion with super sting power. This comfortable foundation feels lightweight and breathable and gives an even tone, beautifully smooth complexion that looks and feels fresh all day long. It can be relied upon to stay perfect, weatherproof, and transfer-proof. It won't cake or flake on dry skin nor slide or shine on oily skin. For best results, shake before use, blend on smoothly and evenly with your fingers or a sponge. So I'm just going to shake this up and this is in the shade Calico, which is their lightest shade. Shocking. So it is definitely a good shade match. This sponge does feel a bit hard to blend. I don't love it. Um, it is definitely hard. I would not suggest this. I don't have all too much experience with makeup sponges, but of the limited experience I have, this is not a great one. It's not really giving me the coverage I was hoping for, so this, definitely a hard pass. I will not be using it again. So I'm going to try out the foundation and I'm going to use one of my brushes. This definitely gives much better coverage this way. So there are aspects of my face that like are a bit shiny, but I think that will be taken care of with powder. Um, in terms of the coverage, I really like it. It is definitely a natural finish. Um, there, it isn't full coverage, and you can definitely see some of my problems areas still, so that's where the face concealer will come in. 
For the face concealer, I have the, it's also from Boots Number no. 7, it's from the same line, and it's the Match Made Concealer also in Calico. So I'm going to be using this on the palm areas of my face, which you can see are here, down here a bit, and in this region. So it's just a stick concealer, goes like this. Okay, so I just applied that to the areas of my face. I'm going to use the brush to kind of blend it out. It, I mean, what do you always think? Do you see a little bit of improvement in these areas? Like a touch, but not usually the coverage I like to get when I'm trying to conceal face spots. So I'm going to try for a second layer. It looks good before it's blended out, so maybe I need to blend it out with my finger instead of with a brush. The brush could be picking up some of the product and not really pushing it in. So, do you like the coverage better when I push it when I blend it out with my finger versus a brush? I think you guys can tell that it does look a little better. This spot's just it's never covered really, so I definitely think that. <clears throat> The foundation and the concealer together go great. That's why they sell them together. I really do like this foundation. I do like that it has a more natural finish to it because even though I've oily skin, I don't always like to go for matte, 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 especially if I'm using a matte primer and then I'm putting a powder on top. Like I don't want it to look cakey, so I don't tend to go for necessarily super matte foundations even though I have oily skin. So I do like the natural finish and the fact that it is a natural finish, I feel like it can work great for dry and oily skin. So next I have the Collection Concealer. This is their Lasting Perfection Ultimate Wear Concealer and it's supposed to conceal, conceal flaws and blemishes for up to 16 hours. I have it in the shade Fair. I am going to try using the sponge again just to see if I can blend it out. So here it is, just a simple doe foot applicator. Going to make a little bit of a triangle. There's definitely like a lot of product comes out on that swipe. I find that not a lot of under eye concealers actually work for me. They tend to make my eyes look worse, so we'll see if this is the same. It just kind of accentuates my fine lines, and sometimes it accentuates my dark circles, so I really think I need to start using a color corrector, but I don't have a color corrector for today, so we'll see how this concealer goes. So this is the side that I apply the concealer to. This is without. I think you can tell like, it definitely did lighten up the under eye area, but... It doesn't seem to be like two in my creases, like a little bit, but I feel like that can't help but be avoided. Like the fine lines are there, things are going to settle there. I find it hard to believe that there is some type of magic liquid that wouldn't settle in lines. The next product I'm going to try is an under eye powder, and it is the NYX Finishing Powder in Banana, and I think it is supposed to brighten the under eye. I totally just fell into everyone talks about it, so I want to try it for myself. Okay, so this is it's set with the banana powder. Not set yet. Difference? I don't see a difference. Like, yes, it's setting, but is it really brightening? Next product to set my whole face is from Natural Collection, and it is their Loose Powder in Neutral Translucent, and this is supposed to reduce shine to give a natural matte finish to the skin. Apply over your favorite foundation. So, even though I am still looking... Mm, I feel like the foundation has settled in a bit and it isn't as shiny, like there is some shine on my skin and a bit on my cheeks, but nothing overly major. So it has had time to kind of settle in a bit and it doesn't even feel that wet. So at the store when I purchased it, she said you don't even need to set it, but I want to test out this powder and I still feel like I could do with a bit of setting. Um, I do like that it is not a white powder. All my other translucent powders are white, and I find that sometimes it can look a bit starkish, and it doesn't quite blend in like you want it to. I like it. It doesn't make my face look too cakey with that added powder on. Next up is the MUA Makeup Academy Sun Kissed Bronzer, and when I swatched it in my other video, it didn't look super pigmented, which is great, so you can definitely build it up and not go in crazy. Um, it did kind of have some warmth to it so I don't want to go too crazy and then look off well. 
See, this is the thing. I think things aren't pigmented, so I really put my brush in. This happened with the butter bronzer. And then it ends up like this. I'm just gonna wipe some off. Oh god, no. Guys, mm. it's too warm. It's too, too warm. Oh gosh. Oh no. I'm really gonna have to be blending this out. How does it look? Too warm? It looks so crazy warm in person. I'm putting more on though. I feel like I've committed. I need to. Oh gosh, no. Guys, it's so powdery that like you put it in and then you dab it. And even though when you swatch it wasn't pigmented on the brush, it really picks up. But now I need to even out my voluminous. So once it is blended out a bit, I feel like it definitely gives me that sun kissed look. It's not so crazy warm. It is definitely warm toned. Like this, if you go cra like you can easily look orange or reddish with this. Um, I don't think it looks too bad now that I've blended it out a bit, but I would just keep that in mind if you do pick up this product. Light handed. Go light handed people. Okay, so I definitely want to use one of these Makeup Revolution blushes I picked out. I got the shades Love and Sugar. Um, I think I'm going to go for Love because it is a bit more toned down and I don't want to go too heavy with the blush today. I'm okay, I think these definitely blend out really nicely. Um, the pigmentation is definitely there. So even though they're little, they are mighty. So just keep that in mind. They are also very powdery. So don't like go digging your brush in just a light, light, light touching is all you need. Like how this turned out. I think it gives it just a nice flush to the cheeks and gives you a bit of color without like being too much. For my highlighter, I'm going to be using from Collection their Speedy Highlighter. And they say it is a smilky, smilky, silky, smooth pearlescent shimmer that creates a radiant glow in an instant swipe, swipe, sweep. Speedy highlighter along the cheekbones, brow bones, and cupid's bow. Blend with fingertips. Use alone under or over foundation. So, it is a cream, not a powder, so I probably shouldn't have set my face first because you shouldn't be putting creams over powders, but you can put powders over creams. But, I kind of forgot it wasn't a powder highlight because usually I only use powder highlights. So, hopefully it won't be pulling too much of the powder and it'll go on nicely. So I am just going to swipe this onto the high points of my cheekbones and up my temple a little bit and just pat it out with my finger. I know sometimes it's hard to pick up on the color on the cheeks. So just so you guys can see, this is what the highlighter looks like here. And, yeah, I definitely should not have put that over powder, but lesson learned, won't do that again. Next time I try this out, it'll definitely be under my powder and just, you know when you like do the same routine so many times and you just get used to it and I always use a powder highlighter so I'm so used to putting it on at this point in my routine that I didn't even think otherwise. Um, but even that is so that it's going over powder, once you blend it out, it doesn't look too bad pulling at the highlighter. So this doesn't have highlight yet. This does. It's right here. Hard to believe this doesn't. The, sh the sun is coming from this angle. So even though I did put it over a powder, I really do like the way it is looking. So yay! That's exciting because that could have ended up not so great. Next is brows. So I have the Brow This Way by Rimmel and it is a brow sculpting kit and it's a wax formula that shapes, defines, and fixes brows and then they have the powder formula which sets wax and gives a natural looking, no, a natural look to brows. Hard brush to define shape brows, soft brush to blend, combing brush to perfect and comb. This is medium brown. So usually like I People don't really use the brushes that come in these things. I'm going to try it just because it does come with. And if you don't have 
brushes already or the money to spend on brushes, then you want to know if the stuff that actually comes in little kits works. So first I'm going to brush out my eyebrows with this little brow brush, spoolie type thing. And honestly, I feel like a spoolie is a spoolie. This works perfectly fine. The only thing is it is like teeny tiny. So I'm going to go into the wax first and kind of shape and define the brows. So that wax is, seems pretty warm toned. Okay, wow. So as you may have noticed, I do have a scar in this eyebrow, so sometimes it's really hard to cover up. So far I've just done the wax and I haven't done the powder yet, but it seems to not be as obvious. Sometimes with certain pencils it won't adhere to the skin because it needs the hairs to cling onto, and so it doesn't really work for me because I don't have any hairs there. So I'm going to go in with the powder on this side. Okay, so this is the finished brow. Going in with the powder took off the wax where it was covering my scar. So that wasn't great, so I had to go back in with the wax again. So if you do have any scars or really sparse brows or areas where there aren't a lot of hair, then I find this kind of tricky to adhere to the skin, but when I went over it with the wax, the wax seems to be good, so maybe just be careful about overusing powder in those areas. Um, it does seem kind of warm toned. The color is starting me off a little bit, but I mean the application was nice. It's definitely, it definitely shapes the brow. So if you like using wax products, or powder products and you like having warm toned brows then it's it's not bad. So this is the side with the wax before the powder even goes on and I do feel like it looks fine. Maybe powder is not necessary to use both because this eye palette looks intense. So next I have the I Heart Makeup I Heart Chocolate Salted Caramel and it has 16 shades in it and it is a mix of matte and shimmers. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to go in with this shade at the top which is called Delicious and kind of use that to just give my eye area a base. Next I'm going to go into Heavenly which is this shade and kind of just put that in my crease as a transition shade. Just giving the palette a sniff. It smells like chocolate. So Heavenly doesn't seem to be giving off too much pigmentation. So next I'm going to go in with Candy. This shade which is a bit of a darker, it's a, it's a light brown. It's just darker than the previous shade I was just using. So going in with that to kind of deepen up the crease. Then I'm going to go in with this darker matte shade called Drizzle and kind of just focus that on the outside of my crease. Yeah, it definitely darked it up, gave the eyes some depth. I think I'm going to put Spoon all over the lid, which is this shimmer shade right here. I really like how that one applied, if you can see it right there. And on the inner corner, I'm going to use Yum, which is this gold shimmer shade. And I think I'm going to use Fudge, which is this like dark shade. It's a dark shimmer shade, has some gold flecks in it, and I'm just going to use that on the outer third to kind of transition from the lid shade a bit. At the top is Delicious, which I used to set my eye. You can barely see it. And then Tempt, which is a matte black. Heavenly, which I used in my transition, which is kind of like this cool pink. Then there is Drizzle, which is this medium brown matte color. And Enjoy, which is a dark brown matte color. Okay, so this is the second row. This is Chalk, which is a shimmery mid-tone brown. Then this is cake. It's supposed to be a shimmery pink. It is such a disappointment. So I'm going to show it to you guys in the pan. This is cake. This is shimmery pink. And this is how it shows up on the hand. Like nothing. I could barely get a swatch from it. The next is perfect, which is a light matte brown. And then we have crunch, which is this turquoise shimmery color. It looks much darker in the swatch than it does on the pan. Then we have sweet, which is this orange color right up here. And Fudge, which I tried to use on my outer corner, it actually came out more as like a bronze shimmer than a 
dark shimmer with gold flecks. Oh my gosh, okay, so the last row is definitely my favorite. Uh, this top one here is salted. It came out like this purple shimmery color. And then next is candy, which is a warm light brown matte. And then we have caramel, which is this beautiful gold shimmer. And then spoon, which is what I used all over my lid, which is more of a rose gold shimmer. And then we have yum, which I used as my inner corner highlight. And it is just this gold shimmer right here. For my waterline today, I'm going to be using the MUA Makeup Academy Intense Eyeliner in Rich Brown. These are just pencils. It's interesting because the lids also have sharpeners to them. So that can be good or bad, I kind of, but it leaves it a bit open. Not sure if you can tell, but obviously for the sharpen, sharpenings to come out, it has to be a bit open. And I do wish the pencil was like fully covered because I'm not sure like how hygienic it is. That part of it is open. Okay, so I definitely had to go over a few times to build up the color and it's not quite on the waterline, but more like the lower lash line, if you kind of know what I mean, where like the hair is versus like the actual waterline of the eye. Um, so I'm interested to see how long this actually lasts because, I mean, if it's not waterproof, your eyes are wet, so it might go away rather quickly. Um, I really do like the look of it though, so I'm hopeful that it'll last. I just realized I didn't put any shadow on my lower lash line and it just looks a little off to me. So I'm just going to fix that quickly. I think I'm just going to go in with Drizzle, which is one of the colors I used in my crease. I just feel like my eyelid looks a bit more complete that way. I'm going to do some eyeliner on top and I'm going to use the Soap and Glory, Soap and Glory, Soap and Glory Carbon Black Extreme Eyeliner. It's their Super Cat. It has ink jet color release and gloss finish fix. Foolproof marker tip. We shall see. I really like the line I was able to get when I was just swatching it on my hand. So I'm excited to see how it goes onto the eye. Okay, so I've just done this side. I really like the thinness of the line I was able to get. It's exactly what I was looking for. I didn't want anything too thick. I have a very small lid, so sometimes if my liner gets too thick, like all that work I just did applying eyeshadow, like what was the point? You can't even see it because when my eyes are open, all you can see is the liner. So I was able to get a really thin line so you can still see the shimmer of the eyeshadow, which I'm really excited about. This might be like the thinnest line I've ever been able to get with the eyeliner. For the mascara, I'm going to be using the Natural Collection Lash Definition Mascara, which defines and separates for natural looking lashes. This is the wand. And so I'm trying to keep in mind that this claims to be a lash definition mascara. So I'm expecting lengthening separated lashes. So this eye has mascara, this eye does not. Um, I definitely said, would say it does a bit of lengthening, darkening. Um, they seem pretty defined, but no curl and definitely no volume. And I really like volume for my mascaras, so maybe I would pair this with a volumizing mascara or maybe find a volumizing primer to use with it. But this on its own is not something I would reach for, but if you just want a really natural look but just to darken up your lashes a little bit and lengthen them a little bit and if you curl them beforehand then I think this could be a good fit if that's what you're looking for. But again these are first impressions so I don't know about the wear time or the smudging so I can't really recommend anything highly at this point. I just have my first impressions to go on. So this is with two and this is with one. Um, it definitely lengthens them a lot more, thickens them up a bit. Still doesn't give you give me the volume I'm looking for. It does clump them up a bit, but honestly, like that definition is definitely still there. Okay, and this is the lashes with two coats. I definitely like it way better. It did volume wise a little bit, like they definitely look thicker. Okay, so I cleared up the mascara and even out the eyeliner a bit and definitely looks better. So for the lip, my lip today, I'm going to be using the Bourjois Lipstick Rouge Edition 12 Hour in shade 31. Base shooting. And 
this is what it looks like. It's a pinky nude. It is definitely more pink than it comes off in the tube. I really wish it was this color. It's it's nice. I like it. And it goes on smoothly. Um, it has good coverage. It doesn't really have any patchiness. Like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I, with my lips, like, you can tell and there's, like, a line where the lipstick goes and doesn't go. And that's not having this problem. I know I explained that terribly just now. So hopefully you guys know what I mean. Uh, for my last product, I'm going to be using the Rimmel Insta Fix and Go 2-in-1 Primer and Setting Spray. It locks in makes up, locks in makeup, quick dry and oil free. Um, as I've never used this before, I'm just going to test the sprayer first so I know how like close far what it looks like. So, not sure if you guys can see that. It has quite um, a nice mist. Mmm, it smells quite fresh, kind of like cucumbers, so I'm just going to spray this on to lock my makeup in place. Definitely has quite a fresh scent to it. I'm just going to help it dry down a bit. So this is the final look. I hope you really enjoyed this full face first impressions. Please let me know if you've tested any of these products out and what you thought of them and if you enjoyed this type of video please like it so I know that this is what you guys want to see. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye and thanks for watching.